Hi, I'm Captain Steven. Welcome to our 26th episode of Boat Test Reports. Today we're featuring what we call a teachable moment as we show dramatic video footage of a boat fire getting quickly out of control and where nearly everything went wrong. This program is sponsored by Volvo Penta and its forward-facing stern drive which brings wake surfing to stern drive boats. Now for the latest news. Last week, French company Hynova Boat and Energy Observer Developments unveiled the world's first hydrogen-powered yacht in Monaco during the Planetary Health Week yachting experience. The prototype Hynova 40 is equipped with an electric motor powered by the newest generation Toyota fuel cell, which creates electricity by combining the hydrogen with oxygen. One version of the 40-foot boat has two 281 horsepower motors powered by two fuel cells and three separate batteries and is said to cruise at 15 knots and have a top speed of 25 knots. She runs silently and emits only seawater and zero CO2. The fly in the ointment is that while the oxygen comes from the air, the hydrogen must be kept under extreme pressure or in a cryogenic container. Both batteries and hydrogen tank take up quite a bit of room and bottled hydrogen is not yet widely available. The French government has set a goal of having 5,000 hydrogen-powered vehicles on the road and to have 100 charging stations in place by 2023. One piece of equipment that the owner of a boat might want to consider is a Seakeeper gyro stabilizer. The latest version, the Seakeeper 1, is designed for boats as small as 23 feet. Let's take a look at some highlights on our review. Now, a couple of key features about this unit. First of all, it's 12 volt, not 110. So much like the Seakeeper 2 and the Seakeeper 3, it can be put on smaller installations. But what's really unique about this is unlike the Seakeeper 2 on up to 35, this is the only one that has a flat base. It can be flush mounted onto the deck. Now, the whole unit itself weighs 365 pounds max. There's a 128 pound flywheel inside. So that's really all we have to concern ourselves with as far as mounting it. The way this boat is configured, it's got four batteries. Now all we had to do to put the Seakeeper in was install a fifth battery system and an 80 amp breaker just behind. The Seakeeper interface works with either Garmin, Simrad, or Raymarine. We've got a meter showing the roll angle, the on-off switch, and the lock button. I can actually roll the boat back and forth and then stabilize it right away. With a planing hull like this, they recommend that it be put anywhere from midship aft. And why is that? Well, because if you put it midship forward, the pounding of the boat will add a lot of wear and tear on it, and that's just not necessary. It takes about 15 minutes to spool up to 80% power, and 100% power is 28 minutes. Annually, they recommend that you do the glycol for the cooling, the hydraulic fluid for the rams, and the bushings. And of course, at every annual inspection, also check the wiring. So let's get out on the water and put all this into practice. The first thing we did was have one of the Seakeeper demo boats make some wakes for us with our gyro in the locked position, clearly having us rolling. Then we activated the stabilizer and did it again. Now she remains stable. So stable in fact that I can stand on the foredeck as the wake hits us. Underway the boat will still have the same rolling into the turn characteristics as normal, but where there is a difference is in crossing wakes. Gyro off, we roll all the way across with it on, we're stable. Even straight ahead in calm seas, the ride was much gentler. Sea Zone Digital Switching has been integrated with Siren Marine to remotely monitor virtually every electrical system on the boat. Let's take a look at this short video to learn more. What we'll be doing today is talking about our latest full Sea Zone integration. And what this does is it takes the Sea Zone system on your boat and it puts the full power of Sea Zone now right into your Siren Marine app. Uh, imagine that you're going to head down to the boat for a day on the water and you want the boat to be up and running and functional when you get there. The refrigeration to be cold, the air condition to be running, your navigational instruments. So I'm going to go ahead and send the uh, at dock command. So when I get there, um, as you can see, my systems are, are all booting up. From the touch of a button on your Siren Marine app, the boat will be ready to go once you get there. Um, a couple of things to think about and why this is so unique, why we're so excited about it, is that as you can see on my app, uh, I've got all six of my C-Zone modes. I've got all of my C-Zone switches. Everything that you see on my C-Zone system 
I'm gonna go to the control setting. All of these functions are now duplicated on my Siren Marine app, exactly the way it is. Be sure to go to boattest.com and click on products and services to see a full description of the Siren monitoring system. Today's episode is sponsored by Volvo Penta, which introduced the forward drive stern drive lower unit five years ago. Now it's standard or optional equipment on over 40 boat models. Let's take a look at what Volvo Penta has to say about it. It's human nature to explore, to escape your confines, to feel a breeze on your face. Don't be limited by land. The water is calling. Discover what thousands of families already know. The power, the reliability, the maneuverability, and the fun of the Volvo Penta forward drive. We put a spin on the traditional stern drive boat with a revolutionary concept we've long perfected, turning the drive 180 degrees. This inventive design creates a boat that's as versatile as you are. The twin propeller duo prop delivers unprecedented performance and fuel efficiency. And the engine design allows for the ultimate in control and responsiveness while providing full access to the swim platform with the props tucked under and away. And it's all so easy to use, regardless of your level of boating experience. Volvo Penta's 180 degree design creates 360 degrees of fun. With around 50 boat models utilizing the Volvo Penta forward drive, your possibilities are endless. From family fun, to time with friends, to those quiet moments. The freedom of the water is calling. Volvo Penta is having a contest from now until October 15th with six valuable prizes for wake surfers sending in their comments on why I love the Volvo Penta forward drive. Boat fires are one of the most feared dangers in boating and they're particularly likely to happen on old inboard or stern drive boats. Wires fray, plastic insulation chafes through, and rubber sheathing deteriorates over time. Fuel lines and electrical connections come loose after years of being pounded around and it takes only a small spark to ignite the fumes. The dangers of fire in an old boat is one of the best reasons we know of to buy a new boat. Let's see what happened after refueling a 42-year-old fiberglass 24-foot stern drive boat when the ignition was started. Here we see a boat on fire in the east channel of Stamford, Connecticut's harbor. It's a 1978 24-foot stern drive that was just fueled up at the dock seen at right. The owner said he ran the blower before turning on the ignition, but if he did, it had no effect. Perhaps it wasn't even working. He and his passengers were able to step safely off and get onto the fuel dock. Then they pushed the boat into the channel. The wind came up and that along with the slight outgoing tide took the burning 42-year-old boat down the center of the channel. The wind steadily pushed the boat across the channel, aiming straight at the Boston Whaler 330 Conquest that was tied up just a hundred yards away. A couple of boaters were eager to render assistance, but perhaps the absence of an anchor and chain to use as a grappling hook and certainly the intense heat of the fire kept them at bay. The burning boat glided squarely into the side of the Boston Whaler with devastating consequences. Having finished with the Whaler, the rogue burning hulk slid down the dock, setting yet a second innocent boat ablaze. Captain John's Tiki Bar has been a fixture in the channel for several years, and it was parked at the dock and closed at the time. It was the next victim. Flames from it shot 60 feet high. After what seemed to be an eternity, but was actually about 18 minutes after the explosion, the city firemen arrived on the leeward side of the channel and trained their fire hoses on the burning fiberglass. The dock lines of the Boston Whaler burned through and the power of the shooting water soon pushed it out into the middle of the channel. The first commercial vessel to render assistance was a Buchanan tugboat that works moving gravel barges in and out of Stamford Harbor. Its crew turned its fire hose on the whaler. 
Throughout the maelstrom of fire and smoke, the city of Stanford's fireboat was safely tied up in her home slip and did not appear until the following day. Virtually everyone at the scene seemed to be frustrated that the boats were floating loose, out of control, and the fires couldn't easily be extinguished with water. Finally, a boat U.S. towboat arrived on the scene, got a line on the wayward Boston whaler, and kept it from causing any damage. We commend the operator of the towboat, as his boat was engulfed with smoke and heat for 30 minutes or so, and he nevertheless tenaciously held the boat at bay. However, the boat that started it all was still drifting loose, and it was aiming right for a row of 40-foot cruisers at the Ponus Yacht Club dock. Finally, one intrepid fireman was able to grab the bow of the culprit and hold it until flames threatened him, too. A boater from the yacht club sprang the fire with his Coast Guard required powdered chemical fire extinguisher. It was remarkably effective, much more so than water. Yacht club boaters started turning their garden hoses on the fire and started evacuating their vessels. After over an hour of burning, the fuel tank on the boat that started all the trouble finally breached and fuel spread out across the water. All of the fires were eventually extinguished by the Stanford Fire Department and the Norwalk Fireboat that arrived from 12 miles down the Sound to help out. Amazingly, the hull of the Boston Whaler still floated on her lines when it was all over, even though it was gutted inside. The other two boats sank. This whole well-documented incident teaches us a number of things about boat fires. First, old stern drive and inboard boats are vulnerable to fires because of deteriorating hoses, hose clamps, wiring, and protective components gone bad with wear and tear. These kind of accidents don't happen on new boats. After refueling any boat, before starting the blower, open the hatch and sniff the engine compartment. If all seems well, only then start the blower. Number three, be sure to keep your U.S. Coast Guard required fire extinguisher up to date. On larger boats, one should be in every compartment. And remember, water is counterproductive with electrical fires, and it is ineffective, as we have seen, against burning fiberglass. Fourth, when you leave your boat, remember you are still responsible for it and what damage or injury it may cause. Number five, don't rely on your local fire department to put out boat fires. Ask your dock master where the marina's emergency fire extinguishers are kept. It will be you and your fellow boaters who you must rely upon in case of fire. For Boat Test, I'm Jeff Hammond reporting. Now for a question from the captain's exam, and everyone should get this one. Which buoy may be even numbered? A, a mid-channel buoy, B, an unlighted nun buoy, C, a lighted green buoy, or D, any of the above? Got it? Well, the correct answer is B, an unlighted nun buoy. Nuns are red, and all red buoys are even numbered, whether they're lighted or not. Well, that's episode 26. I hope you enjoyed it. Tune in next week for part two of our Buyer's Guide to Express Cruisers. For Boat Test Reports, I'm Captain Steve, and I'll see you on the water.